Good afternoon. How are you, my dear viewers? I hope all of you are safe and sound, and you are very much active now to attend my classes. Um, I'm really happy to work with you for the betterment of you to help you in a comfortable situation and. Uh, I hope you will learn English happily and comfortably. Okay, thank you all that you have come uh, to attend my uh, classes. So, my dear viewers, uh, it is very nice to think in a simple way and work in a comfortable way. So, I would like to work with you uh, for the betterment of your learning in English. Okay. Uh, in the previous class, we talked about different parts of the sentence. We talked about the different parts of the sentence. But today, I would like to discuss about each part of the sentence and its classification and its uses. Am I right? So, now we are going to think and discuss about it. <coughs> Parts of speech. Yes. My dear viewers, uh, we have eight kind of parts of speech in a sentence and we discussed it uh, in the previous section during our previous class. But today, I would like to discuss only one thing that is noun. What is noun? And how can we use noun and what is the function of noun in a sentence? Please just be attentive and try to help me in my work. Okay, we are going to discuss today about noun. Noun. So, my dear viewers, now it is very uh, simple and easy task today. Noun. Noun is the name of anything. It is very simple. Noun is the name of anything and that means noun is a naming words. Noun is a naming word. Yes, it is. So, Shahid. Is a bright student. He wants a pen. Look it. Yes. Now, look it, my dear viewers. Uh, we are going to think about noun very clearly which can help you to identify noun from any sentence and it will help you to use noun very easily and simply. My dear viewers, look at it. Uh, Shahi is the name of a person, name. So it is noun. Is a bright student, student. It's also name. So it is noun. Pen. It is also name, so it is noun. So, my dear viewers, now uh, you can easily think about it that a uh, noun is a naming word. The word which indicates the name of anything is called noun. In this sense, we can easily find that uh, student, it is noun, pen, it is noun, shahid, it is also noun. But uh, they have different function here. Though they are noun, but they have different function here. The, in the first case, here, Shahid is the subject. In the second case, student, it is object. And it is pen, it is object. So now, we can easily think about it that uh, a noun is a naming word and it is used in different ways. Now we are going to the next. 
to make it clear for you nahi wants a novel look at it nahi noun subject a novel noun object so it is very easy to you to understand it that noun uh, it indicates the name of a person it is a novel it is also noun but the use of it different it is subject and this noun is object look at it again it is kind of rafiq to help us look at it please of preposition rafiq noun so my dear viewers now we can easily understand the uses of noun in a sentence that is noun is used sometimes as the subject of a sentence sometimes object of a sentence and sometimes object of preposition here of is preposition here of is preposition and uh, rofik is a noun so here rofik is used as the preposition of of so my dear viewers now you can easily understand about the uses of noun in a sentence sometimes it is used as subject sometimes it is used as object and sometimes it is used as the object of preposition in this way we can easily identify a noun from a sentence and we can use noun in a sentence also but uh, today i am going to discuss about the classification of noun according to the quality according to the name according to the position situation and now we are thinking about it according to the number count according to the situation of count we have two kind of noun one is countable and that is uncountable look at it countable countable noun so my dear viewers you can easily think about it countable what is that countable that means we can count it that means we can count it and it is clear to you that uh, it is sure that it will be concrete noun also because only you can see and count the concrete noun am i right so countable noun look at it please she bought a bag bag a bag okay that is countable noun because when you will buy a bag it is not necessary to say uh, to the salesman that i want a kg of bag i want 5 kg of bag that is completely odd am i right the real thing is that when we buy a bag uh, we must count it am i right so it is called countable noun so pen pencil bag shirt towel chair fan boot all these are countable noun so my dear viewers it is very easy for you to understand now what is countable noun the noun which can be count which can be count and which can be measured according to the counting we call it countable noun in this sense uh, if we say it's a board it's a board it's countable noun if i say i have a pen i have a pen so it is countable noun we never go to market to buy a kg of pens am i right we can say i want a piece of pen i want a dozen of pens in this way we can ask the salesman am i right so my dear viewers countable nouns are those which can be counted easily and simply am i right 
Okay, thank you. The next one is uncountable noun. The next one is uncountable noun. Yes, countable that can be counted, but uncountable noun that cannot be counted. It's easy. We can count countable. We can't count that is uncountable. So, in this sense, uh, I, feel, I feel cool in, I feel cool in cold weather, weather, can you count it? No, that is impossible to count weather because that is an abstract idea. That is an abstract idea. So, we cannot count weather. So, weather is uncountable noun. Ice is cold. Ice. Can you count it? No. You cannot count ice. So, that is uncountable noun. So, my dear viewers, now you can easily understand about it that the noun which can be counted they are called countable noun and the noun which cannot be counted are called uncountable noun am i right okay thank you all now we are going to uh, classify according to the meaning of nouns look at it please Noun is divided into two classes according to the uh, action and meaning of that sentence. Noun is divided into two classes. The first one is concrete noun. Concrete noun. And the second one is abstract noun. Abstract noun. My dear viewers, concrete. What is concrete? That means solid substance. That means solid substance that we cannot touch, oh sorry, that we can touch, that we can feel, that we can see. All of these things are concrete noun. Look at it. Can you see it? It's a pen. So I can cast the pen. Can you see the board? Yes, it is white and uh, it is used for writing. So you can see it and you can cast a pen. So, it is easy and simple for all of you to understand about the concrete noun. The noun which we can guess, which we can feel, which we can touch, which we can see, all of them are called concrete noun. Look at it. He caught a fish. So, it is concrete noun, fish. Fish can be seen. A fish that is also countable noun. Am I right? So you can easily understand it that a noun is classified mainly in two classes. The first one is concrete noun, and the second one is abstract noun. Concrete noun uh, is a substance which can be seen, which can be touched, which can be caught easily. So it is called concrete noun. Concrete indicates the solid substances. Concrete indicates the solid substances. Am I right? Okay, thank you all. Look at it again. My pen writes well. My pen writes well. Pen. So, you can easily understand that pen is the name of an instrument which is used for writing. A pen is a is the name of an instrument which is used for writing. So it is concrete noun because you can see a pen. You can see a pen easily. So uh, now you can easily understand about the concrete noun that can be seen, that can be caught, that can be tasked in this way. Am I right? 
So we are going to the next. That is abstract noun. Wow. Abstract noun indicates the uh, quality of anything, the imaginary condition of anything. You cannot see, you cannot touch, but you cannot feel by your sensation. You can feel it by your emotion, by your passion, by your feelings. And you can not see it by, you can feel it, you can think about it. Am I right? Look at it. I like his honesty. I like his honesty. My dear viewers, can we see the honesty of a person in his body? No, we cannot see it. Can we trust the honesty of a person? No, that is impossible. We cannot trust it. So, how can we think it? We can feel it. We can imagine it. We can feel about the honesty by the nature of that person, by the manner of that person, by the way of modesty of that person. Am I right? So, it is abstract noun. Am I right? So, okay. Abstract noun is a kind of noun which cannot be touched, see or feel by our organs. But we cannot think about it. We cannot feel it by our sensation or uh, our realization. Am I right? So, it is the name of a quality. It is the name of a quality. Honesty. Okay. He could not come for his illness. Illness. Can you see the illness? No. We can feel it. We can observe it watching a person whether he is ill or sound in health. So, my dear viewers, uh, honesty, illness, weakness, soundness, all these are abstract noun because it cannot be touched or it, ca it cannot be seen but we cannot feel it by our realization and sensation. So, noun is divided into, uh, into mainly two classes. The first one is concrete noun and the second one is abstract noun. But now, I would like to inform you that uh, concrete noun is divided into four classes. Look at it please. Concrete noun is divided into four classes. The first one is proper noun. The first one is proper noun. So, what is proper? Proper indicates the select thing, the fixed thing or a limited fixed thing. That means, if I say Asan, Asan is a bright student. Yes, it's a single person, Asan. It is the name of a single person only. So, it is a proper noun. The next one is Rashahi. Rashahi is a green city. So, if we say that Rashahi, then it indicates that we have only one city in Bangladesh which is called Rashahi. So, it is a proper noun. So, my dear viewers, now we can easily understand about the proper noun that it indicates a selected person, a selected place or a selected event. Am I right? So, the next one is common noun. Common noun. It is easy and simple. Common. What is common? That is found uh, in everyone or in everything in a group or in such kind of people or among classes. So, it is called common noun. If we say I have many bright students. I have many bright students. So, it is not a single student. 
it is not a single student it indicates uh, all the students of my non figure am i right so that is common if i say the doctors of our country are active then the doctors all the doctors of our country all the doctors of our country so it is called common noun because uh, it indicates the whole class it indicates the whole class am i right and the next one is collective noun the next one is collective noun it is very easy collective means uh, indicates the togetherness of anything collective noun a flock of sheep is walking by my dear viewers look at it a flock of sheep that means it's a group it's a team it indicates the group of people the group of animals the group of birds the group of things when a noun will indicate the name of a group or a team or a class together we call it collective noun am i right so uh, if we say a flock of sheep that indicates that a lot of sheep are together a lot of sheep are together so it indicates the collective noun and the last one is material noun it is very easy and simple for you to understand that material that means substance or things normally it will be solid substance am i right normally it will be solid substance when we talk about the material uh, or substance or thing we call it material noun suppose we need iron to build to build a building look at it iron can you count it at the time of using iron in a building no we don't count it we weigh it we weigh it to get the measurement of it am i right so it is called material noun i want a kg of sugar i want a kg of sugar yes sugar it is uncountable noun and Counted, uh, it is uncountable noun and material noun also at the same time because when we use uh, sugar we never count it we never count it but we weigh it and uh, we can see it so it is material noun material noun it indicates the substance of anything so my dear viewers uh, we have already discussed about nouns and their functions in our sentences and so i would like to request you to follow my uh, classes regularly and please uh, like it and if you find any better thing uh, please subscribe it which will inspire us to work better for you and uh, just wait for the next classes we shall work for you we shall deliver lectures specially on grammatical points and we make our target fulfill by helping you in a simply way and very nicely and carefully okay thank you all